Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to show you how to install a 12 volt socket in your car. I'm installing this in the back of my car, but you can install it anywhere you want power. All right, so we're here in the back of my Subaru. Take out the rubber mat. Take out this cover here to expose the bottom. The first thing we need to do is remove the plastic cover on the lower tailgate. Okay, so to remove this piece of plastic, there are two clips right here which you can pop out using the plastic tool. Sometimes they'll get separated, but that's not a problem. It's actually easier to put them back in when they're separated, and I'll show you that later. So now you just take your plastic tool and just kind of pry up and pop that out. If you can see, there's a clip here and there's a clip here. Just pry those up, and then this piece comes off. In order to make it as easy as possible to remove the rear side panel, I suggest removing the back seat. It comes off very easily by releasing two clips on each side and will make your life so much easier. You can see there's a little clip here, little black clip. All you do is pull that forward and just pull the seat and it comes right up. And you just do that on both sides. With both clips out, all you do now is just take the seat right out. Okay, so before we actually take this panel off, there's two screws and one bolt that we have to remove. There's a screw right there. There's a screw right there. And then down here, I think that's a 10 millimeter. So let's take those off. Now before you go and take out the rear panel, it's very helpful to take out this piece first. This panel just goes right underneath that, so you wanna pop this one out first and it'll be a lot easier to take out the rear one. There's two clips in here. Just lift and pull, just like that. And that comes right out. Okay, so with those out, we can now pop the panel off and it's just a matter of just lifting it and just pulling it out. Now one thing we have to remember to do is to disconnect the light right here. There's a little clip and just push in, pull that out, and then now your panel will slide out. Okay, so now with the rear panel completely removed, I have my switch and I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it where I think I want it to go on this panel. So I think I want it to go right around here next to this light. This socket has some thickness to it, so you have to make sure you have enough clearance. I'm going to install it on this side right here. Just judging by everything, it looks similar, so I'm just gonna take this side off, off camera, but you know how to do it because I already did this side. So we got that side panel removed. You can see how the clips go in the top over there. So now taking a closer look at the passenger panel. This is where I want to install it. We don't have a light, so this will definitely work wherever it goes over here. Now if we just take a quick look at the back, we can see that we're definitely going to have enough clearance because of this indent right here. So I think putting the plug here will be perfect. When we're installing this, you can see that the lip is wider than the actual socket itself. So we wanna make sure that we drill a hole that is not as wide as this lip, but just wide enough to fit this socket. And I'm gonna show you a little trick for doing this. Unscrew the plastic bolt or washer. Now get a, a screwdriver, line it up where you want it, just trace the inside. And then now that is where you are going to cut. It's not super thick, so you might even be able to get away with just a razor, but the Dremel is definitely going to make it easier. So let's do it. Okay, so there's the finished hole. Take our piece and just push it in right where it needs to be. Here is the front clip that mounts 
like that to give it a nice finished look. So let's go ahead and mount that. Like that. Now we're gonna get a bit. I think this one should work. And this piece just screws on like that. Now let's wire it up. Whenever you're doing any wiring on your car, it really helps to just make a diagram so you know exactly where all the connections are going, what wires you're using, and it just simplifies the whole process. So we start with our socket back here. We have a positive and a negative. We're gonna take the negative and we're just gonna ground that to a piece of metal on the chassis. Then the wire, the positive from the socket, is gonna come out and go all the way to the fuse box. We're gonna need a connector because the wire just isn't long enough. It's going to connect to our fuse tap and that's going to go into our fuse box. Now this is a fuse tap right here. You can see this part goes right into our fuse box. It has two fuses. One is for the back one is for the wire and then the front one is for the fuse that's already in the car for the fuse that we are going to actually tap. Whenever you're doing any electrical work on your car, you always want to remove the negative battery terminal. Put that off to the side. I decided to go with 14 gauge wire for this project. When selecting wire, it's important to take into consideration the amps, length, and gauge. This chart shows the gauge of wire you need based on the length of the wire and how many amps you have running through the circuit. I'm running eight to 10 feet of wire with a 15 amp circuit. So according to the chart, I will need 14 gauge wire. All right, so you can see what I did here is I just put the wire in the fuse box in the area that I'm gonna be doing the connection and then just proceeded to run it all the way back here around and then up to the socket. It doesn't have to be exact. You probably wanna leave yourself just a little bit more room, but at least this will give you an idea of how much wire you need to cut. We are going to connect our ground wire. I actually found a suitable ground right here that goes right to the chassis the body that's going to be perfect when connecting the ground make sure that you are connecting to a piece of metal that is bare painted metal will not work and will not complete the circuit okay this is the wire that is going to go to the socket and we're just going to put it right in this existing ground right here so this is perfect we're going to pop this panel off here we're going to lift up this plastic piece right here and then the wire is going to be able to go right under and this just comes right up we can just feed the wire right underneath like that now we have to watch out for this seat belt so we'll pull enough wire through and we're just going to tuck it just right in front like that. The weather stripping back a little bit like that. We can get much easier access to it. And then it's just held in with these little clips and it just pulls up like that. Wires coming out right there and then just push that back in. Take the weather stripping and just reattach it. So now with the wire completely run, we're gonna attach it to our fuse. Pop off this panel like that and pull down the fuse, giving us access to our fuse panel. Now if we look at the fuse panel, we can find out which fuse we want to use. Now I'm just gonna use the existing 12 volt socket. I don't know if it's focusing, but it's that one right there. And that's the correct amperage we need. So this is gonna make a per the perfect fuse to tap. Just in case you didn't know, most cars have a fuse puller under the en engine fuse box, which is this great thing right here. So you just take that out and it's gonna make pulling the fuse inside very easy. So we're just gonna go in here. We're gonna find this one here. This is the second one from the top. It's going to be that 15 right there. Get the puller in and just pull it right out 
like that. Okay, so here's our fuse tap. I have two fuses that I put in. The factory fuse doesn't fit the adapter in there, but the kit comes with two 15, with a bunch of 15 amp fuses and you get like 10 of these things. So the back one is the fuse that is actually powering the power wire and the front one is the fuse that actually powers that circuit. So what we wanna do before we connect this is we just wanna wire this up. Grab your wire strippers and strip off about a half inch off the end of the wire. Give the wires a little twist just to make sure that everything stays put. Grab your heat shrink and I'm cutting it in half because it's a little bit more than I need. And when you grab your terminal connectors, just check the box and make sure that it's the right size for the gauge wire you're using. Slip the heat shrink over the, the fuse tap and then stick in your freshly stripped wire. Grab your crimpers and give it a nice solid crimp for a good secure connection. Slide the heat shrink over the connection and this is where if you have a heat gun, it would be ideal. I didn't have a heat gun so I'm actually using a lighter which worked out just fine. Make sure that you don't hold the lighter in one place too long because you'll risk burning the heat shrink or the wire. This is probably overkill but I just want the, the most secure connection possible. Insert the fuse tap behind the lower dash. I'm going to connect the circuit I identified earlier. Tuck the wire behind the lower side panel and then let's head to the back of the car to wire in the socket. I took the wire connected to the socket and cut off the fuse that was attached because we already have a fuse at the fuse tap. Strip the end of the wire and twist the end to prevent any fraying. Slip on the heat shrink, grab a terminal connector and crimp the terminal for a good solid connection. Slip in the wire leading to the fuse tap into the terminal and crimp away. Slide the heat shrink over the terminal and seal it up. Don't be lazy like me. Get a heat gun if you plan to do electrical work. A lighter is obviously not the best choice, but it works. Now we just have to attach our connections. This is the positive. That's going to go right there. And then we have our ground. That just comes on the bottom like that. So before we go and button everything up, we just want to make sure that it works. So I'm just going to take my tire pump and we're just going to test it out real quick and make sure it works. You will have to connect the battery again. So just remember that before you do this because it won't work unless it's connected. So we have that in. Let's turn it on. There we go. It works. So we are ready to put everything back together. I just finished assembling this side and this side right here and here's the wires so I just want to be careful of where I'm going to run this wire in relation to this back panel. I chose to run it right along here right in front of the clip. It's not going to interfere with the mechanism of the tailgate and it's going to be out of the way and I figure it's a little bit more secure here than running it down here. Okay, so once you got this back panel in, one thing that you definitely want to make sure of is that the weather stripping is above it because when you take it out, it's going to, it actually sits underneath it. When you put it back in, you just have to tuck it back in. So I just take this little plastic tool here and just run it along the edge like that and just make sure that the weather stripping is actually on the outside so that you get a nice a waterproof seal along your tailgate. I decided to take a couple of zip ties and secure the wire to the existing harness running along the body. This will keep things secure and organized and in the event you ever need to remove the panel it will be much easier with the wire secure. Don't forget to reattach the wire to the light. Okay, so here's that trick I was telling you about before when you're installing these. The easiest way to do it is just to pull them out. And then what you do is you stick the clear one in first, like that. And then it's much easier just to stick the back piece in like that. And just do both sides.
All right, let's get the, the back seat in. Just make sure you get this clip at the bottom here. Push it in and you're good. Okay, there's the finished plug. And we are all done. The whole car is buttoned up. Everything is put back in place. Nice and neat. No visible wires. Battery is connected. So hopefully you found this video helpful and uh, it'll encourage you to give this a shot on your car. Now I did this on my Subaru Impreza. So if you're taking off the body panels and things like that, it will be unique to this car, but the electrical is not. All you're doing is just running the wiring through the body so you can do this on any car. So if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, it really helps out the channel. And I'll see you on the next one.